gentlemen, Mike here, and welcome back to my Minecraft Lord of the Rings custom NPCs tutorial series. <laughs> that is quite a mouthful, but this is part two. In part one, we learned how to create custom NPCs and how to edit some of their attributes. Today, we're going to be moving on to pathing. I am in creative mode, as you can see. I have found myself a town in Dal Amroth, and we're going to use this town because it's a good way to showcase some of the uses of pathing. So first off, we are going to go back. If you remember, we're going to flip over here. We're going to go to custom NPCs tools and we're going to grab some of these tools. Last time we used the NPC wand. We also used the mob cloner. We learned how to use that. Today we're going to be doing the NPC pather and we're probably going to be using the mounter as well because I'd like to show off some of its, its, uh, its uses as well. So first off, what I've done is I've gone ahead here uh, from my mob cloner and I have created a dolly, the doll Amroth soldier. <laughs> so we are going to be spawning him or her. We're going to say it's probably a him named dolly. And uh, I'm going to be showing you how to use the pathing tool. Now the pathing tool, well, it's fairly self-explanatory. It allows you to create set paths for NPCs and they will follow those paths. Uh, if you want to do scripted events, if you want to have say guards roaming around a town doing patrols, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So I'm going to imagine that we want a couple of guards around this marketplace. Now, first thing we're going to do, let's, let's, uh, we'll start right here. Say we will create ourselves a soldier. We'll spawn him in. I think it's a him. And you'll see that he's just sort of standing there doing nothing. Now, what we want to do, if we're going to use this NPC pather, is we need to right click on the NPC we want to... There we go! That will register Dolly to my NPC pather. And you will see that their first set of coordinates, is, which is where they're standing right now, has now been registered. Now what I can do is I can actually wander around anywhere in the world, and I can right click on the ground, and that will register a new point along the path. And um, the only rule you really have to remember is that you have to stay within a 32 block radius of your last point. So as long as you're following that simple rule, you should be pretty good. So we're going to go around here and we're going to add a few points along this path. And, uh, you know, just sort of for an example. Now, let's do a few of them there. Now, you'll notice that Dolly is not moving at all. And that's because he is still set to be just a standing stationary NPC. What we can do is go back to our NPC wand here and we can right click on it. We're going to go into AI and we're going to go into movement. Now you see the movement type is standing. We want to change that to a moving path. Now let me go through a couple of these first. First off, you know, the animation can still be the same as they're following the path. They can be aiming or dancing or crawling or hugging or whatever. Let's put them on normal for now. Now the second most important thing you want to look at here is the movement. Right now this path is set to looping. And I'll show you looping. So right now he is starting to follow the path. You will see when he reaches the point, he pauses for a second. And when we go back to the movement tab, I'll show you that again. Actually, he does not seem to want to pause that much. Oh, there he's pausing for a second. Taking a look around. Now he's turning. Now watch what's going to happen when he gets to the end of his path. He is going to, well, just sort of wander back to the original path point and start again. Now what we can do, if we want to have him, which I prefer, and it's good for a guard or something like that, if you want him to be backtracking, that means he will basically follow the path through, and when he gets to the last point along the path, he will backtrack. <laughs> he will just go back along the same path, and that is generally, for most situations, I would say the best way to go. You don't want to have them sort of wandering all over the map in between the last point that you have on your path and the first point, the original point. So yeah, you really want them to be doing backtracking in most situations, I would say. You'll see in a minute here that he's going to reach the end of his path, and he's going to turn around and go back and follow it back. The perfect kind of situation for a guard. You know, he's going to follow his route. Now, the other thing you can do, and you got to note, when I, every time I change his attributes, he's going to reset and go back to his original point. I can turn this pausing off so that when he hits these path points, he doesn't actually pause or do anything. He just keeps on going, doesn't stop. So if you want a guard that's just, you know, consistently going, or you want a group of soldiers that are, say, marching, then that is something that's very useful. Look at that. So very simple pathing. Now the other thing you can do, if we click on him, we can actually edit these paths. So I can move the paths, these different points up and down. I can delete certain paths. And uh, this can also be very useful if you made a mistake and you want to remove one of the path points. Uh, for example, I can delete the second one and then he will 
instead of stopping here if he was pausing he would continue on to the next path and then continue around so the pathing tool if you click on him and you don't click on the ground you can edit the path points one by one all right so we have our first guard here he is going around looking very cool actually now let me show you a couple other things we're going to imagine we want to create a few guards now imagine we want for example a group of soldiers and they're marching up the road so let's clone here we're gonna spawn say three of them get out of my way sir i'm busy here doing a tutorial Leave me alone so we got three guys spawned here now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna quickly set paths for all these guys just a quick path down to the end here all right last guy right there done okay so we have all three of these guys and they are basically going to be going along this path straight all of them having separate paths but going in the same directions now we're going to edit them the same way i'm going to set their movement to um let's set them to looping uh actually let's set them to backtracking as well so we got a moving path we have them on pause let's turn pauses off and we will just do this done now of course during my tutorial it starts raining so another little tip in case you don't know, slash weather clear, we'll clear things right up. We're back to normal. Okay, so you see these guys are following along their paths, but the problem is that their timing is a little bit off. They're sort of all over the place. We really want them to be synchronized, right? We want to get a good, nice shot of a bunch of marching guys. We don't want them randomly wandering all over the place. So what we can do is we can right-click using our NPC wand, right-click on the air, and you will see these are all the NPCs that we have set up right now. What we can do is we can, first of all, we can freeze them. And they just, whoa, that is creepy. <laughs> I've never tried that before. Anyway, we can freeze the NPCs. Okay. Or we can reset them all. Which means, well, we technically we want to unfreeze them. Let's reset them all. Now we have, check that out, a group of synchronized marching soldiers. Super cool, right? Well, I screwed up that guy's path a little bit so he is not synchronized anymore but generally we have what could be considered a marching group of people and uh, again you'll notice when pe for people that are doing machinima this kind of thing is used a lot if you want a group of marching soldiers or something like that you want to keep them in sync um, it works really really well so pathing down now let's try one more time here let's reset them one more time reset all I should note a couple of other things. If you want to, say this Dolly. Now these guys are unfortunately all named Dolly, so it's hard to tell them apart, but we can also teleport to any one of these NPCs by hitting TP2. Uh, we can also delete them or reset them individually. We can also edit certain people individually as well. Very, very useful. I seem to have, what did I actually do over there? Oh, there we go. All right, we're back. We're back in business. Anyway, you can see how pathing works. And this is, you know, a good introduction to being able to do that. The only thing, again, you really need to remember is to keep uh, your path points within 32 blocks. The second thing that you should probably know is once, if you have NPCs that, you know, their patrol routes or their paths are great distances, you can run into problems if certain chunks unload and uh, you know your NPC is in an area where the chunk was unloaded you can end up with sort of screwed up pathings and uh, you can end up with NPCs that get sort of get stuck in between two path points I've seen that before I'm not sure if it's a Lord of the Rings mod issue or if it's you know a custom NPCs mod issue but I'm probably guessing it's just to do with the way the Minecraft engine works so in a huge town like this you got to make sure that you know your paths aren't too big that your soldiers are just sort of not wandering around in areas uh, that may get unloaded otherwise you're pretty much good to go all right, so there's another thing I want to show you. We're going to go out into the field here because I'd like to show off the mounter. Now, the first thing we want to do, first off, let me explain something. Horses in the custom NPCs mod are a little bit finicky. So let's create ourselves a horse. We're going to right click here to create an NPC. We're going to edit the model and we're going to choose a Lord of the Rings horse. Somewhere down here. Horse. Now you'll notice this horse is white and that is the issue that we're coming to. All horses in custom NPCs, as far as I can tell, turn out white. 
And um, let me show you a couple other things. First, mountable, yes, belongs to an NPC, yes, which means I believe that you can't mount them yourself, that only NPCs can mount them. You can also change them to a chested horse if you want to have, you know, sort of a traveling group kind of look. Eating haystack, I guess that's their animation right there. You can see if you want a stationary horse that's eating as part of a scene, then you can do that. You can also make the, a baby horse, and that's really about it. But, again, you will see that there's kind of a texture issue here. The horses don't seem to be able to load textures. And I was having trouble with this, and I'll tell you what I did. I extracted the horse textures from Minecraft itself, and I created a texture pack with those in them. So I can actually go up here, and I can go into... Uh, where can I go? Minecraft, I believe? See, now you'll notice that I can go into Entity and I can go into Horse. If I did not have a texture pack installed, the one I created, I would not be able to do that. Now, I don't think I'm able to distribute the textures from Minecraft itself. That would be against their terms of service and technically illegal. So you guys are going to have to do that yourself. You basically have to open the Minecraft jar. Uh, you have to go into their texture folder and take out the Entity, Horse Entities, and create your own texture pack. I, again, can't really distribute it, but if a lot of people ask me, I may have some kind of tutorial on how to do it anyway let's choose um let's choose a nice gray one there we go all right we got a horse here let's uh just leave it for now so we got a horse now say i want uh in fact let's let's clone my horse here we'll save it and we'll clone another one there we go spawn another one okay so we want to have an npc mounted on this horse right so we're going to use our mounter we're going to right click on the horse and we have to choose mount by so i'm going to choose dolly so, there we go. We now have an NPC mounted on the horse by choosing mount by. We're going to do it again. We're going to click on Dolly and we're going to mount by. Now, you will notice that there are sometimes some issues here. The NPCs tend to sometimes sort of move their bodies around so that they're not facing forward like this, where it's just weird. And quite honestly, it's not an easy fix. If you're doing scripted scenes, you can set the direction that they're facing. And, uh, the, you know, if you want to do a scripted scene where they're riding in a certain direction, you can just have them stationary in that direction on top of the horse. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but let's, again, use our pather. We are going to NPC pather. We're going to click on the horse this time. Let's go up here a little bit. Let's choose this as my next point. And then we're going to do it the same to the next horse here. All right, you can see that their pathing is working okay. Now, if you do notice that they are sort of, you know, their rotation is they're rotating around on their horses or they're looking the wrong direction, what you can do is click on this guy. I'm going to set their to zero. Now, you see what happens there. He is actually stationary. The problem is when he turns around, he's going to be facing the wrong direction. But generally, if you want to shoot a scene, you can have them moving in a certain direction and you can have them set to just face in that direction all the time. And that means that they won't move around and it will look a lot more realistic. If things get a little screwy and the movements get off, you can always do a reset and they tend to fix themselves. Now you can see they're perfectly in sync again. See what I mean? Things do get a little weird sometimes. So if you're making patrols, then I would recommend not using horses as much as possible. They are really finicky. If you're shooting scenes, then you can sort of mess around a little bit and you should be able to fake it so that they work generally well. All right, I think we're pretty good. Let us sort of end off. We're gonna do um, a bunch of marching guys here. Let's try a whole bunch of them and just check performance wise how things work. So what we're gonna do, and I'll show you something else here that you can use. See these placeholders? These things are actually very useful as markers. So if you want to say set up a marching band or a marching group, what you can do is sort of use this as ways to set their beginning and end points. And you can always erase this after the fact. Wait, are there two towns right here? I didn't even notice that. That's pretty amazing. Okay, let's get them all started here. You can always take these out after the fact, right? All right, let's set up a bunch. Let's see how we go here. I'm gonna set up a bunch of these guys and then I'll be back when they're working, hopefully. If these guys are not in my way. Okay, I've set up a bunch of NPCs here. They are all sort of randomly walking around right now. Let's see how they work as a team. Let's reset them all. Boom. Check this out. We have our own army. 
Well, this guy seems to be ahead of the pack for some reason. He is the leader. Again, you can always sort of reset a bunch of times. Sometimes they get out of sync. You can fix them up, but look at that. That is pretty amazing. And actually the performance is generally pretty good. If you tend to be doing a lot of wandering around, you can see once in a while they will sort of freeze or get hitchy or something, but generally they are pretty good. Let me sort of show you something here. I know you guys may not be super into machinima. Let me show you. I use multi-shot for a lot of my camera stuff. There are a couple of mods I use, but we're gonna try multi-shot here. Uh, this is probably too slow. Let's just give it a shot and I'll show you a couple things here while we're at it. Let's try a little set a point here and then we'll set a point say here see how we do I'm gonna try and get a nice camera shot as they're marching here all right this is not too bad let's give it a shot see how it works oh look at that tell me that does not look good the city in the background group of marching soldiers along the way there and we're out of space but that's basically how I get my shots I mean this is how I work I set up a bunch of different camera angles I set up NPCs and there are multiple ways to do this some stuff I use motion capture for and I will do a tutorial series on motion capture at some point in the future I have done some sort of basic tutorial stuff or, or how-to videos in the past but anyway I think we are done with pathing today you guys have a good example of how to do that when we move on next time, we're going to be starting with combat. While it is fairly complex to do custom NPC battles with the Minecraft Lord of the Rings mod because of the way factions work, it is possible and I will show you some of the tricks and tips next time on how to get that to work. If you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more. Take care guys and have yourselves a great day.